Hello, this is Anthony from SonicGoodness.com here with another video tutorial. This one's not so much a tutorial as it is going to be showing off part of my workflow. I saw that uh, someone had asked on the propeller head uh, user form if anybody actually ran a podcast out of Reason and Record. And that got me to thinking that maybe I could show off my workflow and maybe it'll inspire somebody else to um, set something up for themselves. So what I do, I have this template file, new from template, and I've got it labeled as my podcast here. I'll come in and I'll record a dialogue line, normalize it, and then go through and uh, cut it up with trying to remove all the ums and ahs and awkward silences that I tend to have. Hmm. Anyway, um, and as I do that, I'll drag it down to this podcast dialogue. This original vocal track here, it doesn't actually have anything on it at all. As you can see it over here, it's uh, actually muted at the moment. And what I do is, uh, after I get it all diced up and sounding somewhat it's a normal guy, you know, these are simply questions that I've had, you know, clean sounding. I'll drag it down there uh, to the podcast dialog that runs through the M-Class DSer. This is the one that actually comes with uh, reason and record, I'm fairly certain. Um, let's see. Yeah, see, awkward pa pauses and ums. This is the problem with doing these things live. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, this podcast dialogue gets split. What I do with it, though, I've got a intro and outro music that I've got set up. Like so. It's all nice. But the cool part is... Hello and welcome to the Proclamation Podcast, episode number 14. As when the uh, vocal comes in, it goes through this multi-band sidechain compressor that I have set up, modeled after a tutorial that I found on YouTube. And what it does is the uh, vocal comes into these bottom imagers and is split into four different bands, which are then the music line actually comes in through its own set of uh, imagers before there is a side chain compression going on to reduce the volume of those different bands based off of what the vocal is doing. So I don't ever have to worry about my vocal line, uh, wait, no, my music line uh, stepping on my vocal line. So it's always real crisp and clear and downright shiny. And what I've done is uh, actually uh, did the um, programming, what do you call this? You know, where you assign everything. So I assigned the uh, crossover frequencies if for whatever reason I actually needed to change those on the fly. You can see that they are actually, <laughs> you guys missed that, I actually pointed at the screen to show you what I was doing. Okay, so yeah, you can set these different crossover frequencies. Uh, it's important to note that these three would actually need to be set. Uh, this one would need to be the lowest one, this one needed to be the middle one, and this one needs to be the high one, or else you're going to end up with something really funky. And then I've got uh, a knob to control all the ratios. So, it's kind of a nifty little thing. And the other thing that I do with my podcast is, I'm the only person on it, I don't have a co-host or anything like that, but I do tend to do quotations quite often. So I set up a second uh, audio track to where when I'm splicing things up, I can just click it and drag it down to this bottom line if it is a uh, quotation. And for quotations, in order to uh, make it stand out a little bit, what I do is I run it through the uh, telephone speaker emulation that came with Record and Reason FX Bank. Yeah. And that uh, kind of gives me something that'll stand out. But you know. anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Why do we need Jesus genealogy? Well, I've been asked this several times. So there you go. You know, it's still my voice and I don't have to bring anybody else in to do any kind of co-hosting. And I can actually get something that uh, separates itself from the rest of the dialogue. And it's actually clear that... Um, you know, I intend it to be understood that it's somebody else uh, asking a question. That also goes through a de -esser. And that's pretty much it. 
I do have a, um, you know, the typical who's a what's it here in the master section. Basically, the only thing of any importance, actually everything's bypassed. The only thing of any importance is the limiter, you know, that radio sound. You got to pretty much uh, jam everything through the roof and try to keep everything real even. Uh, but that's about it. So running a podcast. Oh, yeah. The other cool thing you can do is being I've got this music channel. Anytime that I need to put any sound effects or anything like that. And what I've actually got over here is kind of a interlude. If I'm changing topics in the middle of a uh, podcast, I can just click and drag it into the location of where I'm changing topics. So it, it makes it easier for the listener to say, oh, well, maybe he's moving on to something new. I'm not quite as bored. Maybe I'll listen to the rest of it. Yeah. Anyway, and the other uh, tricky thing, it took me actually reading the manual to know how to do this. Uh, to get it to show up in this new from template uh, little drop down menu here, you have to come in and you do a save as and I've already got it set up here. Go into your uh, computer. Well, whatever your user folder is. I'm using Vista here. And from Vista, you go into your application data folder, into the roaming folder, into Propellerhead software, into record, and then there's a folder for template songs, and you just save it there. Ding. And now it'll show up. Oops. Well, it's probably a good idea to clean out any audio data that you don't need. Like, you know, all this green stuff here. Yeah, the action sequence of me saving my audio file off. Uh, okay. Come on, do it. There we go. Wait. So, if it were something new, it would be showing up right there. Anyway. So, this is, like I said, not even really a tutorial. If anybody actually uh, wants this multiband sidetrain compressor, I think there's one in the uh, uh, Reason Factory sound bake, so you don't need this, at least my version of it. I'm sure that there are different knobs, and these buttons aren't actually doing anything here, but uh, there are different ways to set it up. Anyway, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, nice little short one here. Just wanted to share my uh, workflow. Anyway, guys, have fun. We'll see you next video.